Say hello to my little friend. Welcome back Shop Nation. Today we're gonna to put the finishing touches on the upper cabinets that we've been working on for the past two episodes. So what does that mean? We get to paint! Yay! Now I hate painting. I hate finishing work in general, which is ironic because I want everything to look nice in my shop. Go figure. Don't get me wrong, I am psyched to see how this stuff turns out once we're done. I just wish I could fast forward like you guys can to see the end. So to make the act of painting a little less terrible, that's right, I'm gonna be using an airless handheld sprayer. Now I've never done this before, so it might turn out like crap, but I have high hopes. I did some research, looked at some reviews, and this Graco version, Graco? 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 This version is a True Coat 360 DS. DS stands for dual speed. This is kind of the middle of the road version of this particular sprayer. This one is model 17A466. Now I got mine on Amazon, and if you're interested, look below. I'll be linking whatever I'm using in this video in the description per usual, but this one in particular, the cheapest price I found was on Amazon. It's actually a pretty cool system. All you do is literally plug it in, fill up your paint in some disposable kind of bladder looking things in this area, and go to work. But of course, before you get to any painting, you have to do all the prep work. All right, let's get to it. I am really tired of taking these damn cabinets on and off the wall, but this should be the last time. Once I had them all laid out, I started filling nail holes with wood filler. I found that pushing it into the voids with my finger was the best method. After letting it dry completely, I sand the entire face frame smooth. I personally chose to round over all of the edges. There's really not a huge need to do this, I just chose to do it. Then it was onto the doors. Now since I didn't use nails, I could obviously skip the filler step. Next up was to remove any sawdust or dirt from the surface. I did follow this up by wiping the surfaces down with a rag as well. The reason I did that was in preparation for caulking around the center panel. Now, I will be the first to admit, caulking is an art, and I am no artist. Take your time, make long, smooth passes. One of the easiest ways I found to clean up the not-so-neat caulking lines is to use this little silicone tool I found. And you just run the tool along the joint and it smooths out into a consistent bead. I then used the vacuum technique to remove dirt and sawdust from the cabinets themselves before painting. So it's finally dry enough where I can actually do some painting. So the first step is to cover up everything in the area that I'm going to paint, which I'll do like that. Hmm, pretty cool. Since I'm spraying a heavy latex paint, I found that paint particles don't actually travel as far as, say, spray paint particles. This is why my entire garage is not covered. Now I chose not to paint the inside of my cabinets, again personal choice, which meant that I have to tape off the inside. This took forever. Nothing left to do but paint. Full disclosure, I did paint some scrap pieces prior to attempting this to make sure my settings were dialed in. Highly recommended. Long smooth passes at a consistent distance and angle from the surface is key. Can't say that I did that 100% of the time, but it's key. Oh yeah, quick tip. Elevate your pieces slightly off of the ground. Not with magic, I mean with a piece of wood. That latex paint will actually dry and stick to the plastic and create these big sheets that you then have to cut off your piece. Definitely not a huge deal, just one additional step. I did eventually apply a second coat of paint to all of the forward facing surfaces, like the face frame and the door fronts.
These unfinished areas were sprayed when the other side of the door was painted. On to the hinges. I'm using European style concealed hinges, which require a circular pocket to mount. To locate these pockets, I 3D printed a jig. I will do a video coming up where I'm going to talk about 3D printing specifically as it relates to a shop because I think it's really important, so stay tuned for that. This jig is double sided and it references the corner of the door. You'll notice that I had to modify the jig by drilling a hole. I got my measurements wrong while doing the CAD. I didn't have the patience to reprint the jig. Oh well, live and learn. With the hole location marked, I took my test piece to the drill press and dialed in the depth using the stop gauge. This prevents the Forstner bit from going all the way through your workpiece. Happy with those results, I can start installing the hinges on the doors. Line up the hinge square with the door, then use a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill for the screws. Next up is drawer poles, and you guessed it, another 3D printed jig. And again, another screw up. I specifically learned not to trust the published hole spacing dimensions. I ended up modifying one of the jigs, but it turned out it wasn't actually necessary. Similar idea, register the jig on the corner of the piece and transfer the hole locations. Then rinse and repeat for all of the doors. When it came time to mount the doors, I just cut a spacer the correct size to center the door on the front of the cabinet. Resting the bottom of the door on the spacer, I again used a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill for the mounting holes. These hinges are actually really forgiving in that you can adjust the final fit. This adjusts side to side position of the door, how far the door sticks out from the face, and up and down position of the door. Very last step was installing the shelf pins to hold the shelves. I hope I don't have to explain how this works, but the pins go in the holes. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. We finally wrapped up the upper cabinets. Next step is gonna be tackling the lower cabinets, which are gonna look a lot like this, but have a lot more functionality built into them. You'll see what I mean when we get there. I really love how these cabinets turned out, even though they were a pain in the ass to finish, they came out looking fantastic. I originally planned to do an accent color, kind of some orange somewhere, I may still do that in the future, I just couldn't decide exactly what I wanted, so I'm not gonna rush it. Again, I will have links posted in the description of everything I used in this project. 
from hinges to hardware to tools, you name it, I'll link it. Things I learned, airless sprayers are awesome. Definitely look into the Graco unit. Pluses of that sprayer, it took literally no time to do the coats of paint on this thing, which would have otherwise taken probably an hour or two doing brushes and rollers. It was extremely easy to use, extremely easy to clean, and relatively low cost. Some downsides, the volume of paint that's held in that little squishy canister is pretty small, so I had to refill it quite often. That being said, the refill process was very easy. The sprayer also has a motor heat overload sensor in it. It actually shut off towards the end of spraying the first coat on the bodies of the cabinets. A quick look at the manual and it says just let it cool for 20 to 30 minutes and sure enough I was back off to the races. No big deal. As far as paint quality goes, now I'm not an expert painter, obviously. This is probably where the old mantra of get what you pay for comes into play. The paint job isn't exactly indoor kitchen quality, but that could very well be the prep work on my end. Overall, great tool, highly recommend it. I will be using it more in the future. Last but not least, I'll give a subscriber update. As of shooting this video, we are at 12,352 subscribers. I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's awesome, thank you. As always, stay tuned, look for more episodes on the bottom cabinets and further episodes as I continue to build up my shop and keep pursuing shop greatness. See you later.